I think if you've got the right role models that make you feel like anything is possible, yeah, guess what? Anything's possible. Hey, so I'm Sammy, I'm 20 years old. Uh, I'm a YouTuber, derivatives trader, entrepreneur. Yeah, and I like to have fun. I got into crypto in 2017. I was 15 years old. There was an easy exchange that I could use. I was quite young, so I didn't understand the technicalities. As soon as I got in, I uh, my first trade was Ethereum. I bought it at 80, ran it up to 300. No, I bought it at 180, ran it up to 300 and panic sold at 80. That was my first ever trade and I just got sucked straight into the game from there. Took courses, books, I got mentors, I learned from mistakes and it just snowballed from there. The first one I ever had was uh, was the major panic sell that I did when Bitcoin crashed from thir from 3,000 down to 1,800. Well, it crashed down to 1,600, I think. I panic sold at 1,800 and I re-entered at about at five thousand in <laughs> I think in like August or September of 2017. The crash from six down to three wasn't nice for anybody. I was there. I, I did short it. I made some money on it, but overall I lost a lot on the USD crash. For the most part though, I'm really tight on risk management. I don't really have wrecked moments anymore. I haven't been wrecked for like four years. I would like to think I'd become a trader anyway. If it's not crypto, it would probably be stocks because stocks seem super fun. It's the you know real world stuff. You can leverage that up a little bit. That would have been there. Uh, I was already a YouTuber before this, so you know I'd probably still be working on the YouTube things. I don't know if, if life would be as good as right now. Probably not, let's be honest. You know, for me, one of the reasons I got into trading was to avoid ever getting a nine to five job. Actually, it's the reason that I tried to be an entrepreneur since I was 13 and so on. I just, I saw what I didn't want very early on in life. It actually happened because I wanted a Lamborghini when I was younger, I had bad taste. And I looked at the starting salary. My dream job was to be a computer science engineer, like, I mean, a, a programming person, like for video games or whatever. I looked at the starting salaries, 35,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds if you're very lucky, and then the price of a Lamborghini. And I realized I'm never gonna get the life I want. So I need to do something different. And that's why from the very beginning, the whole approach was always, I need to shortcut my way to wealth. It was really ambitious, obviously. But I think if you've got the right role models that make you feel like anything is possible, yeah, guess what? Anything's possible. The lack of freedom, man. Um, you know, I wanted to be able to travel and see the world. Uh, I wanted to be able to enjoy the, the successes that I knew I would be building. Uh, actually, for me, it started off as not wanting to go to university. So I dropped out of school as well. And it was all just the, the freedom thing. It was so dramatic when I was what, like 16, 17, I decided I would rather die than, <laughs> than do any of that. Yeah, and it was, it was all for freedom. It was, it was freedom of travel, freedom of time, freedom to do whatever I want. I knew that I wouldn't get that. My dad's been a businessman for a lot of his life. He kind of got it. I think he just knew I'd be fine. I don't know why, but uh, I, I do appreciate that he didn't pressure me. Mom was a different story. And by the way, I, I was a smart kid in school, right? Like I was one of the kids that kind of like, you know, I had to study, but I was okay. And so I looked like I would be the first person that would graduate to university in my family. And that was a big deal for my mom. She wanted me to be a doctor. She wanted me to be a very sensible, good Pakistani British boy. There was a lot of pushback from her. She wasn't happy with it, but when I started paying the bills, when I crossed the 100K, 200K, 300K net worth barrier, I wasn't listening to her anymore. I mean, it was, it was my game. There wasn't really a concern of me wasting my time. I mean, I used to play video games like 10 hours a day, dude. You know, I mean, when it shifted into YouTube and it was constant work, but it wasn't anything like I was wasting my time. I think if anything, my mom wanted me to, you know, go outside a little bit more, get some real friends, stuff like that. I was a social, I don't know what to say. I had no friends. I, didn't, I never went outside. I was always in my bedroom all day, every day. My parents were fine with it. I mean, I was kind of in that generation. A lot of kids these days, they just, yeah, they're like that. It's not a good thing, but uh, it worked out. It depends. If you have a budget, I'd say buy a course from somebody. That's just the easiest shortcut to get absolutely everything you need all in one place. If you don't have a budget, I'd still say find like $10 and buy some course on Udemy or something. The reason I'm saying this is when you put investment up front, you're going to pay a little bit more attention to it. Crypto is something you need to do right. For specific books, Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets by John Murphy. I love that book, is kind of what got me through at the very beginning. YouTubers that have beginner's guide, I, I have a beginner guide, it's like 50 minutes long, how to trade four flies, how to trade Sammy Loyal. If you put that in the search bar, it'll come up. You know, beginner guides like that can give you like, you know, if you have absolutely no, no idea, it can run you up to some level of intermediate understanding. And from there, if the guide is made well, I like to think mine is, uh, you'll know what the next steps are as well. I'd say work out more, bro. I'd say get fit. 
having money but being fat is not cool. Uh, and I'd say uh, figure out how to buy Bitcoin, man, because uh, I wanted to get into Bitcoin when I was like 12 and 13 and so on, but I just didn't understand it. The technical barriers were way too high. You know, you had to understand the tech, you had to understand the philosophy. It was just too much for a, for a young guy. So I'd say power through it because <laughs> it's going to be worth it. Bybit's been my number one since 2018 and I don't actually use any others. It's hard for me to say. Other than Bybit, I only go OTC. No, but, but it's true. I, I was using Bybit before I started working with Bybit and Bybit was my preferred ex exchange before I started working with them. I was a real trader back in 2018 too. Like I knew what I was doing in terms of picking exchanges. Liquidity was very important. Stability was very important. This is back when BitMEX was overloading all the time. I needed something stable. So that's why I went on to Bybit and you know, the partnership just happened afterwards. Uh, I bought my mom a house in, in Dubai. That was done. Uh, when Bitcoin was averaging around 57k. So that was a great, that was, that was a really nice hedge. My mom, uh, when I was younger, in my teen years, when I was 13 actually, it was brutal. She actually got diagnosed with breast cancer. She had to get the surgery, I don't know what you call it. That really put her through it. Uh, maybe that was one of the reasons I was fighting so hard. I was 13 when she got it. I was 17 though and I got my driving license and I just started to leave the house all the time. I was never there, she's a single mother, we had a big house. And so when I started to leave the house, sometimes my mom was getting sick and I wasn't even there, I had no idea. And she wouldn't tell me, she would call her friends. And when I found out about this, I was like, I'm being a horrible son right now. To, I need to do better for my mom. So, you know, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to get her that house in Dubai. We already have a lot of family. And yeah, the, the whole idea was I, I get this house, it's a big house and we just get all the family in there so my mom's never alone again and to me that's a major win because you know i'm a young guy i want to travel i want to see the world so my parents actually split up over religion dad uh, is a hindu mom is a muslim uh, i got squeezed out the middle and it caused a lot of tension in the family i saw firsthand how destructive you know religion can be within a family that period was really really difficult that's roughly when the divorce was happening it was messy i still you know i mean i see my dad all the time i see my mom all the time they're obviously not going to get back together but it's it's the best i can do yeah i mean now that i've got my freedom uh, i'm able to just kind of you know jump to my parents wherever they are in the world or bring them to me i don't think it did anything directly if i had to put something on it i would say perhaps mental resilience it's gonna harden you up right like when you experience some level of emotional trauma as a child whatever it is I mean this is not that bad overall right I mean people get divorced all the time these days but you know other kids can have it a lot worse so I don't want to act like I had a horrible like I, I'm, I'm really happy with my life overall but um I think yeah the, the more challenges you face the more difficulties you face you're gonna be better equipped to be a trader because you will have that emotional resilience and, and you need that I, I feel really sorry for people that encounter challenges like that and just totally give up and fall flat if you're facing adversity like that and then you just crumble like shit, no one's coming for you, bro. You're gonna stay exactly as miserable as you are unless you do something about it. I read this in a book when I was 14. It's called The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. And chapter one is about take responsibility for your life. It's, it's like, forget blame. This changed my life. I was super depressed as a teenager. I hated my life in those few years. I, I was really miserable. The book lifted me out of that because it focuses on like, look, you've got your problems. We all have our problems. They might not even be your fault, but you're responsible for them and if you don't accept responsibility for it you're not going to change it and nobody's going to change it for you you could be miserable and i'm sure you're going to get your dopamine hits from it but come on like if if, if you put in the work and you come out the other side it's going to be much better you know you, you have to pick your problems you're always going to have problems i i definitely i call myself a trader because you know when i have to introduce myself that's who i am but for the most part dude i'm just the way I see it, I'm living my life, I'm making my YouTube videos, and in the meantime, when there is a liquidity gap in the market, when there's an opportunity that, I, I in Market Wizards, this is the third and final book I'll recommend by um, Jack Schwager. Uh, one of the great people he interviews in that book, it's a great book of, uh, yeah, just top traders in the world. Kids, one of the guys says, the way I like to trade is I like to just sit in a room quietly, wait until there's cash, in the corner and I'll just go there, quietly pick it up and walk back. And it's, it's the best analogy for trading. I mean, a lot of people, especially in crypto, this is what I try to beat out of people on my YouTube channel, is they think, if I click buttons and trade, I make money. And, uh, and that's not how it works. It's not like the more you log into Bybit, the more you look at your charts, the more you do XYZ, the more money you're gonna make. That's absolutely not how it works. 
The only way you make money in these markets is by waiting for good opportunities, the right timing, the right setup that fits your risk profile, and you execute when the time is right. That's it. You don't do anything more, you don't do anything less, and that's, yeah, that's the way. One of the top goals is to create the best trading education resources in the space, and the biggest, I already think it's the best, but it's not the biggest, so we're gonna get there, we're gonna take that crown back, and that's gonna be a fun process. The thing with YouTube, dude, is if you put pressure on it, uh, you're gonna crumble. Uh, YouTube is incredibly intimate and intense, and especially when you're doing it every day. I live, sleep, breathe YouTube, and if I set expectations that perhaps are not healthy, I would quit. I've been doing this since I was eight years old. I think one of the reasons I've stuck around so long is because if I don't feel it, I'm out. I take my breaks. If my focus changes, you know, I mean, I used to make music videos and tech videos, gaming videos, news videos. I've, I've tried everything. It shifted with my interest. And I think that's gonna kind of be how it continues to, to go. I remember listening to other YouTubers when I was younger about partnerships. They're talking about only work with brands that you really, really like. I didn't really know what they were talking about. But, you know, one of the things that I think took me to where I am now is I just took advice from people. I'd say, you know, if, if you're able to, whatever industry you're in, even if it's trading, if you're able to pick people that are good at what they're doing and then you compound forward with them, it's gonna be a huge explosion of good things. You know, I mean, this, this event that you guys put together, it has fired up every single one of us. It's motivated and inspired us. I almost see it as, uh, and I'm sure you guys did as well, as an investment from the Bybit team into just, yeah, just growing even more. Picking long-term partners that you can compound forward with. Don't underestimate estimate the power of compounding forward with people. This works in trading too. One of the key things that I was able to enjoy as a trader in terms of benefits is socializing with good traders, understanding their perspectives. And if you don't have access to them, that's totally fine because you know, you got all the YouTubers under the sun doing live streams and videos and podcasts and so on. You can, I mean, it's like having a one-way conversation. You, if you're talking to somebody that knows way more about the markets than you, you don't want to be talking to them. If you're talking to them, you're making a mistake. You need to shut up and listen and learn from them. Uh, I don't know where this is going, but thank you guys so much for watching. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, whatever. Yeah, see ya.